In this week's video, Daryl and Nicole give a tour of their 2022 A-Liner Classic and get a few surprises showing off their new trailer. And it's leaking quite a bit. <laughs> Daryl, <laughs> you've got a project. Join us in this brand new video from Golden Canine Campers. Hi everybody. So we're going to give you a little tour of our A-Liner trailer today. And so first we're going to start on the outside and then we're going to go into the inside. Okay, here we go. Okay. So here we're going to start off with the fun and exciting, um, I don't exactly know what you call these, but the door splits in half and locks together, which is really nice because you can just close the bottom. And if you've seen any of our other videos, you'll know that we have dogs. So it's really nice to close this up and have them inside. They can still see us when we're out here, but they're nice and secure behind the, the closed door. And of course at night, you close up both doors and they latch together. The door is one of my favorite features. Um, we have these stairs right here for getting in. And so we only need really need one stair to get up. And it basically just closes away when we travel. And I have seen some people um, actually bungee cord this, but yeah, so far we haven't really needed that. <laughs> Sometimes it gets stuck. <laughs> All right, so the next feature starting over here is this is actually one of the uh, latches for when the top comes down. We've discovered that that is a perfect place to hang the dog leashes so that when we come out, we can just hang them up. But one of the other things over here, um, this is a little light that turns on. You can't probably see it because it's daylight, but uh, here's a little light that like illuminates the walking down, which is nice at night. You can turn it on as you're taking the dogs out or you're taking yourself out. Wait, underneath this latch, you have a couple of outlets where you can plug in just your regular stuff. Here we have the rail where the outside stove goes on. Um, we're not currently using the outside stove, but if you do, it just hooks right on in here and down here is where the propane connector goes. We have storage right down here. So we don't use our storage very much. Um, we put a couple of things in here. Um, we'll put our um, wheel chocks and and things like that in here. We'll put our, our hose in there as well. So when we are- Electrical cords. Electrical cords we also um, put down here. But we try to minimize how much weight we're putting in the trailer because we're kind of close to our limit. Um, our RAV4 Prime can tow 2,500 pounds and we're at about 2,200 pounds. So I try to minimize how much stuff that we actually have in the trailer. Um, but this is a storage unit. And, it's yeah. also accessible from inside under the bed. So uh, you can use it for all kinds of storage, not just from the outside. Yep. Um, there is a nice little latch right here to hold the um, door open, so you can, don't actually have to manually hold it open. And it locks up with a key. We have um, four stabilizers, so pretty much all A-liners I think now have four stabilizers, um, two on each side, and so it, it keeps the, the trailer relatively stable when you're walking around. We really, we really like it. Um, and if you notice, we have a rear dorm dormer on ours. And so we went with the hard dormers, and so they do quite a bit in extending the usability, usable space inside. Next we have your standard tire. Um, here are the various connections. Um, here's your fresh water connection. This is to fill up your tank. This is the power um, cord that we you can plug into shore power. I don't quite know. Cable. This cable is TV outlet. If you have Connector. cable. <laughs> um, that's hot water uh, heater for the trailer. This is where the drain is that's going to That's the heat. furnace. That's for the furnace right there. And then we have our fridge vents. Um, and the drain from the sink is right down there. Yep. This is our outdoor shower. We have not used our outdoor shower, but it's got hot and cold water. Um, but we can hose off the dogs. <laughs> we could get a little- Hose off ourselves. Hose off ourselves, get a little shower tent, um, which we're, I think we're planning to do um, so that when we go on longer trips. And why is it leaking? 
Oh, there must have been some water in here. Um, we haven't put any water in. <laughs> and it's leaking quite a bit. So our hose, we need to do some work on this. <laughs> Daryl, <laughs> you've got a project. Um, here is our connection for the solar. It's solar ready. We don't have solar panels yet, um, but eventually we will get that hooked up to solar. Um, end of the power core, which we showed you earlier, where it was plugged into uh, the A-liner. A and here's where we have it currently plugged into our RAV4. If, of course, you're at a parking uh, parking site with um, full hookups, you just plug this into there. there. This is Daryl's area. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got our, <clears throat> our wireless um, brake controller right there. Um, we've got our uh, hitch coupler right there. We actually lock our um, A-liner up when we, cause we go hiking a lot. And so make sure nobody can take off with our A-liner. Um, the battery's up front here currently. Um, and we have propane. We actually only have one propane tank. It came with two, um, but just to reduce weight on the tongue, I think we were at about 290 pounds on the tongue and we're only rated for 250 pounds. And so we had to get rid of one of the propane tanks and probably I'm gonna go with lithium ion here in the near future and maybe move it. Um, into inside of the trailer. Um, but for right now, we're just, we just take the propane tank and I put it inside the trailer when we're traveling um, so that way. And I put it right over the axle. Um, and then after we get to our destination, I just pull it out and hook it up. So. Um, another nice little feature is this little light right here it would illuminate this in case you get there when it's late at night yeah. and you want to light up the area. Here is another storage compartment. We have uh, some, I don't know, miscellaneous things. We're, we're not packing a whole lot lately. So right there is our fire extinguisher, an extra blanket. Um, we have an umbrella in there. This is also accessible from underneath the dinette set. Um, so we'll show you that when we go inside. But it's a fairly big storage area. Okay. So the storage area we just showed you um, from outside, you can also get into it right here. It's underneath the dinette. Um, it's really nice. Um, shoes can go there and you can get to it from outside. This is where the fire extinguisher was. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of, um, uh, yeah, it was a tripping hazard. <laughs> and you know, we have the dogs, so it was hard for the dogs to yeah, get in. So and... we just unscrewed it and stuck, the, stuck it in there. <laughs> Probably not super fire safe, but at least we still have it. Well, first thing we're going to show you right here is our microwave. Um, it's a really nice uh, microwave. Oh, pops open. Little, just a little cute little microwave. Great for heating up like a one or two person meal. It's really handy having it right there and it's out of the way. It doesn't yep. take any um, cabinet space or anything like that. So it's really nice. We really like it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's, let's go in this direction. Okay. Um, underneath the, the cabinet right here is another little storage area. Um, it's pretty tiny. Um, so uh, it goes all the way back and all along the floor, but it does. the microwave is up above it, so you don't see a whole lot there. Um, down here we have some more plugs. We have the heat pump. Uh, we have a cable connector and one of those things. It's 12 volt. 12 volt. Yeah. So. Um, there have we have our O2 sensor. Um, just uh, checking to make sure that we have no propanes or any any sort of um, any sort of leaks within the system. Um, we have our um, let's see, have our, we have our electrical box right here with all of our uh, different fuses um, and circuit breakers, and so that's all right there. And then here we have some more um, intakes for the um, or just kind of breathing, I guess. It's not really an intake for the AC system, but it just lets everything kind of breathe a little bit better uh, underneath there. 
Um, over on this side, we have a storage area. Uh, this is fairly big. That's where Daryl's coffee pot lives when we're traveling and his whole coffee setup. We have some more controls here. Um, this is for the furnace right here. We have a couple of more plugs. This is the actual furnace that blows out. And then over here we have the water heater, the water pump. Um, I don't quite know what those other ones are. What are those, Daryl? Um, so the auxiliary, it's going to it's gonna light up um, when you're actually um, using your water heater or water pump. So I think when you turn those things on, that lights up. And I think. And then we have our refrigerator. I'm not exactly sure what that is. That's a refrigerator vent. So when your fridge is venting, maybe that turns on. I'm not, I'm not exactly. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so next up we have our refrigerator. Um, it is a three-way uh, refrigerator. It will run off of the propane. It will run off of the battery, right? Yep. And it will run off of the electrical. Yep. Um, it's very hard for me to open. There we go. Daryl has no problems. <laughs> Um, so apparently we have some things in there. It, it's surprisingly large. I mean, this is a, a regular container half of, gallon of milk. Of milk it fits great down there. A um, whole bunch of soda cans and stuff like that yeah. in here. They all fit fine. And there's a little freezer right there. So and we've actually tried it. We are able to put our frozen dinners and stuff like that in yeah. there. It works really nicely. It works great. And what's really nice about this one, as opposed to the, some of the older ones, is um, you can actually turn on the propane. So you can see right now it's actually working off of gas. Um, so the gas is lit up. So pretty much um, as we switch back and forth, and so when we turn, when we hook up to 120 volt, um, it'll automatically switch to AC power. Um, and then once we disconnect, it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't have to go into the vent area and switch back and forth. Um, you can um, select how cold you want it, um, your unit to be. So we currently have it at the, at the top level. You might want to go down to four. I did notice that the spinach was frozen. Oh, okay. We're going to switch over to number four. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. Um, and you don't have to light the gas yourself. It is auto igniting. And so you just hit the gas button and then it'll multiple times it will try to ignite and then it'll eventually ignite. If it doesn't, you'll get the check light that'll come on. Um, and so you turn it off and turn it off, back on again and then turn it on to gas again and eventually it works. And once it's, once it kind of primes and gets gas into the lines, then it doesn't have any problem switching back and forth between 120 volt and gas. So that's really nice. And we do use the 12 volt. So we use the 12 volt when we're traveling. So we'll put items into the fridge um, beforehand and then we travel to our destination. And so the fridge is working off of 12 volt and off to the car battery um, when we're traveling. And so that's really nice. And we haven't had any problems with items moving around in the fridge or with, you know, like the fridge door kind of opening up. Can you pull it on it real quick, Nicole? Um, cause it has this really nice lock. Um, maybe eventually we will have to lock it cause I've heard other people have had to, you know, they've had their um, fridge door open and items fall around and stuff like that, but we haven't had that problem at all so far. Okay. So let's show you guys the dinette set over here. Um, it's currently set up as a dinette. Um, it has the little table right here that you can just nicely pull out and then you can put out the legs. I'm not going to put out the legs right now, but then it just sits right here. And so pretend the legs are down. You have a lot of nice space to sit <laughs> right there. Um, it also will go right here and become part of the bed. You don't have to use it there. There's enough slats that you can also do that, but the table also nicely fits right there. And then you only need to put one slat yeah. in, basically, right? And then I grab one slat, and it now is ready to become a bed. 
Yeah, so the whole issue with the, um, the slats, that was always kind of a pain because you have to pull all those things out and put them in place. And now with the, um, the portable kind of dinette and portable table, you just put that in, in place of the slats and then you only have to pull one slat out and that's really nice. And then what's really nice also is the table fits really nicely into that area for travel. Okay, so this is the way the cushions come down. I must say that this is one of the things I really don't like about the A-liner. These cushions do not fit ideally. Um, you can see that one, um, one bench is a lot shorter than the other bench. You can see this one here ends there, and right here this cushion is a lot longer, or this side is a lot longer. So the back of that one needs to go here. And you're gonna have your your the like kind of offset right there. This one here, when you squeeze that in between there, it's not quite as long, so it leaves you a gap. So the gap's either there or the gap's here, right? <laughs> yeah, so the the gap's either there. Or you can not have a gap back there, but pull this one all the way out and fit this little wedgie thing in the back there. Um, but then this thing here <laughs> hangs over and there's no slat to support it. So the way I have it set up is I take this thing out and have it like that. And I have a gap right there. I'm Eventually, I guess I can get myself something to shove in there, mm -hmm. but I'm not like laying there hmm. a whole lot. So that's kind of how the bed gets set up. Let me show you guys the the under the seat storage real quick over here. This is that same one that you can access from uh, from both that door and from the outside. So that's really nice. Uh, there's another storage back here. It goes the long way. Let me... Now these are not really like handy to get to. The, the back one and this one under the seat. So you're going to want to store things that you're getting out like at the beginning of the trip or... Just in case stuff. Just in case stuff. Um, I have some of my cushions, my extra cushions stuck in there. Um, and I take them out at the beginning of the trip. Here is that storage area. So we have a couple of extra blankets. I don't know, I think maybe an extension cord right there. So that's that. And this one here, I don't think we have anything in there at all. Uh, it's just a really long, really long, narrow, um, uncomfortable thing. I guess I could put in like an umbrella down there or something. <laughs> if you need it, it's there. It's not, it's not handy though. It's hard to, hard to get to and hard to close. <laughs> so one of the things that um, is so great about the A-liner, the one that we got, is we got the one with the hard dormers. And so it really expands, especially if you have the dinette open, which is um, what we had it initially. You just have much more room to walk around in here. So if we didn't have this dormer, basically this wall um, or the ceiling would come straight down and we'd lose all of that headroom. But now we have so much more room to walk around and it makes um, just the A-liner feel so much more airy and so much more roomy than what it really is. Um, now, this is the back dormer that we have, um, and it doesn't quite provide as much, um, I think, roominess as the front dormer does, but for us, um, we use this back bed a lot for watching TV at night, and so it works out pretty well for us because we're able to then um, have our heads um, and get comfortable back here and then we have room for our heads uh, to rest. And so it makes it, for us, it does make it actually a lot more comfortable. Um, and the way we often set up is um, we actually use that front area as a movie screen, as a projector so you, screen. You can kind of see we have the PVC pipe right there. 
And then we have uh, a screen that we attach with Velcro to the corners. Yep. And it's great. And then we have a projector that we project up to the screen. And so it works, works really nicely. So we just kind of kick back here and we watch movies. Um, we have a, a, a portable a wireless projector, so we don't actually need any power in order to power the projector. And usually it lasts for about four hours or so. Um, but yeah, we just then plug it in um, to some power source and, um, and we're able to um, then power it up. But we basically just download movies off of the iPad. Yep. And so Nicole will, check, will find her good selection of movies or good selection of shows. And then we just watch it right on the iPad or watch it from the iPad to the projector. So it's yeah. really great. Yeah. Plus, that is a nice insulation um, at night. It keeps the... I leave the screen up at night so it's both privacy and it's insulation in case it's really cold. So um, we actually got the A-liner that had the um, permanent bed. So initially me and Nicole actually disagreed about the permanent bed, bed because we wanted to have the couch and I think the couch would have provide us, provided us a little bit more space but you know it's just kind of a pain to have to set up. Yeah kind of a pain to have to set up every day. Um, and so Nicole really doesn't like having to set this area up every night. Um, and to have to set up, to have to set up also the bed every night probably would have not been ideal. But um, it works really nicely with the permanent bed because combination, it's just automatically set up as well as the vents come all the way out here. And so the heat pump um, supposedly didn't work all that great with the sofa bed or the sofa. Um, when you made up the bed because the vents were so far in as opposed to being way out. Um, but this uh, supposedly works a lot better. Um, and we really, you know, the bed works out great for us. Yeah. Permanent bed does. And so um, I sleep on the dinette thing mainly because we have the two dogs and also we, this is kind of too small for us to sleep in together and I'd have to crawl over him if I wanted to get out and I'd be claustrophobic against the thing. So we've divvied up. I sleep on that bed. Daryl sleeps on this one. So one of the nice things about having the bed is that during the day, the mattress topper that I use for my bed um, can come over here and just live on top of the bed. So it's a little thicker um, than what it, it would be if I, that wasn't here, but it's really nice. It's out of the way. It looks fine. Um, we also have some nice comfy things to sit there and watch TV, watch our projector. Um, so that's pretty much... So what's, what's really nice about the classic um, that kind of drew us to it was we, we decided that we wanted the hard dormers. And if we would have got soft dormers, we would have had much more windows, um, but they would have been kind of plasticky windows. Um, but we, it would have been much more open here as well as on the sides. But when we decided to go with the hard dormers, the only window that we had was right here. And so we thought we, it was really important for us to have these extra windows on the sides that the Classic provides. Um, and so I'm really glad we en ended up going with the Classic because it just kind of opens up the whole space, I think, a little bit better. So if we would have went with the uh, Ranger 12, with the hard dormers. I think we would have just felt kind of closed in. Although it does feel kind you know, real nice and cozy when you are closed up, but then, you know, when the day kind of gets a little bit later and you want to open things up, um, it's really nice to have that open feeling. Yeah. So the curtains, um, the curtains are not my favorite thing about this thing. They just velcro up and they roll down like this and there's little snaps that you can attach. Um, they all roll down and snap down and attached so that you can really have them um, secure. And then we have windows as well. So the windows open up. So these um, windows on both of the dormers um, will open up and they have screens on them as well as the windows on these sides right here and on this side right here also open up and then you have the screens door. on them. And then you have the door that can open as well. I've seen folks that get like screen doors for the front door or do some sort of a little project. That's pretty cool. Um, so you could have the door open and have a screen. Um, so we might 
you know, eventually look at doing something like that. Um, I don't think we ever showed them the sink. Yep. This is the sink. I don't know how practical of a sink it is. It's this little really shallow sink. Um, I mean, it, and it, when you, and when you use it, it like yeah. <laughs> water goes splashing so, up. I just tried this a minute ago. There is actually water some water in the system a little bit. There. So okay. it does flow out, Okay. but it's not, it's really shallow. It doesn't come. I mean, it might be nice if this came out, you know, like a kitchen hosey thing, but I don't know. It, it works. I mean, it's water inside. Yeah. Um, the one thing about the Classic that we really liked was the removable stove. So they've got a stove that will sit on top of here and they have a propane gas connection down here. But what's nice about it is you can take it out. You can either take it outside or we just actually don't take it with us, but we have a lot more counter space and so we really enjoy that. Thanks for watching our tour of the A-Liner. Hopefully you enjoyed what we've done to it. We haven't done a whole lot. So we'll give you an update once we start doing some modifications. We do want to hang up some hooks and things like that. Um, so we'll let you know when that happens. Yep. And so if you got any value from this video, please uh, like it as well as subscribing to our channel. And I hope to see you in the next one again uh, very soon. Bye. Bye. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago